What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A 221002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about Microsoft Windows operating system security settings such as users and groups, NTFS versus share permissions, shared files and folders, system files and folders, user authentication, BitLocker, BitLocker to go, and EFS or encrypted file systems. Let's talk about users and groups. So there are four standard account levels in Windows. The first one is the administrator, the admin accounts. These are special accounts that are used for making changes to system settings or managing other people's accounts. They have full access to every setting on the computer. Next, you have the power user and power users can run legacy applications in Windows 2000 or Windows XP professional certified applications. Power users do not have permissions to add themselves to the admin group, nor do they have access to the data of other users on an NTFS volume. In Windows 10, the power users group has been discontinued, but it is available to assign for backwards compatibility. Next, you have the standard user. So standard accounts are the basic accounts for normal everyday tasks. A standard user can do just about anything except perform tasks that involve system wide changes, such as installing hardware or software, unless they can provide an administrator password. And then finally, you have the guest account. So the guest account lets other people use your computer without being able to change PC settings, install applications or access private files. The guest account is disabled by default and guest accounts are just really used for visitors. Let's talk about NTFS versus share permissions. So NTFS are a new technology file system. This is the standard file system for Microsoft Windows, NT, and later operating systems. NTFS permissions are used to manage access to data stored in NTFS file systems. The main advantages of NTFS share permissions are that they affect both local users and network users, and they are based on the permissions granted to an individual user at the Windows login, regardless of where the user is connecting from. We have share permissions. So share permissions, they manage access to folders shared over a network. They don't apply to users who log on locally. Share permissions apply to all files and folders in the share. You cannot granularly control access control to subfolders or objects on a share. You can specify the number of users who are allowed to access the shared folder. Share permissions can be used with NTFS, FAT, and FAT32 file systems. Next, we have allow versus deny. So both NTFS and share permissions each have two settings, which is allow or deny. If a user wants access to an object such as a folder to where they can perform certain tasks, the user has to be added to a list granting access to the folder. And then the admin would have to select allow for the appropriate permission. In some instances, an admin must issue an explicit denial if the user is part of a larger group that already already has access to a parent folder, but needs to be kept out of a particular subfolder. Moving and copying folders and files. So depending on the permissions, moving and copying files and folders can produce different results. So for example, copying a file or a folder to a different volume, the file or folder will inherit the permissions of the parent folder it was copied to. When the file or folder is moved to a different location on the same volume, the file or folder will retain its original permissions. File attributes. So these are a type of metadata that describe and may modify how files and or directories in a file system behave. Typical file attributes may indicate or specify whether a file is visible, modifiable, compressed, or encrypted. To view file attributes in Windows, just right click the File Explorer or the Windows Explorer, and then select Properties. To view the file attributes from Windows command line, just use the AT. T-R-I-B command. 
Shared files and folders. So shared files and folders assign permissions via the security tab of the object's property sheet. And these permissions include the following. You have full control. This is where users can add, modify, move, and delete files and directories, as well as their associated properties. In addition, users can change permission settings for all files and subdirectories. You have modified. This is where users can view and modify files and the file properties, including adding files to or deleting files from a directory or file properties to or from a file. You have read and execute. This is where users can run an executable file, including scripts. You have list folder contents. You can display folder contents. Read. Users can view files, file properties, and directories. And then write. This is where users can write to a file and add files to directories. Next, we have administrator shares versus is local shares. So admin shares are hidden network shares that allow system admins to have remote access to every disk volume on a network connected system. To connect to the admin share, a user must provide a username and password for an account on that system. Local shares are normally configured on a folder or library basis in Windows. So for example, the admin share for the C drive on a system called Mark-PC, it will be written as as backslash backslash mark dash pc backslash c dollar sign permission inheritance and propagation so permission propagation and inheritance describe how files and folders receive permission so permission inheritance is when any permissions that are set in the parent folder will be inherited by any subfolder of the parent and to view an example of this you can just select the folder within an ntfs volume right click it and select properties security and advanced subfolders that are not inherited permissions from the current folder propagating permission changes can be applied you would just select replace all child object permissions with inheritable permissions from this object system files and folders so these are files with the system attributes to make these files and folders visible in windows 10 just open the file explorer and select view then uncheck the boxes that are hidden that need to be viewed user authentication so authentication is the process of proving you are who you say you are windows includes a variety of authentication protocols that can be used on the corporate network including some of the ones you see on your screen right there apple microsoft google they use single sign-on to enable a single login that provides access to multiple servers then we have BitLocker. So BitLocker, this is a full volume encryption feature included with Microsoft Windows versions, starting with Microsoft Vista. It is designed to protect data by providing encryption for entire volumes. And by default, it uses the AES encryption algorithm in Cypher blockchaining with 128 bit or 256 bit key. There are some requirements for this and they include the following. You're going to need a trusted platform module chip or a TPM chip. And this is a chip residing on the motherboard that actually stores the encrypted keys, or you're going to need an external USB key to store the encrypted keys. And you're going to need a hard drive with two volumes, preferably created during the installation of Windows. One volume is for the operating system that will be encrypted and the other is for the active volume volume and it will remain unencrypted so that the computer can boot. And then we have BitLocker to go. So in Windows 7 and later versions, BitLocker functionality was extended to removable drives and external USB drives, including flash drives with BitLocker to go. To enable BitLocker on Windows 10, just go to the control panel, hit systems and security, and then the BitLocker drive encryption for external drives. Just right click the drive to encrypt and select enable BitLocker. And let's talk about the encrypting file system. So the EFS on Microsoft Windows is a feature introduced in version 3.0 of NTFS that provides file system level encryption. EFS can be used to protect sensitive data files and temporary files and can be applied to individual files or folders. EFS files can be opened only by the user who encrypted them or by an administrator or by an EFS 
key holder. The technology enables files to be transparently encrypted to protect confidential data from attackers with physical access to the computer. Files encrypted with EFS are listed with green file names when viewed in Windows Explorer or the File Explorer. And to encrypt the file in Windows 10, you would just right click the File Explorer and select Properties, Advanced, Encrypt Contents to Secure Data. OK, Apply, OK and OK. To decrypt the file, you would just follow the same procedures, but you would clear the encrypt contents to secure data. All right, so let's get into some of this outstanding check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, uh, which of the following refers to a built-in Microsoft Windows account with complete and unrestricted system access? Is it the root? Is it power user? Is it the administrator or is it the supervisor? So which one of these gives you complete and unrestricted system access? The correct answer is uh, the admin account. Next question. An authentication subsystem that enables a user to access multiple connected systems components, such as separate hosts on a network after a single login on only one of the components is known as what? Is this NAC, SSO, AAA, or MFA? So which one of these will allow for you to get access to all types of goodies with just one login? The correct answer is SSO or single sign-on. All right, and final question. What is the name of a Microsoft Windows feature that allows for encrypting entire drives? Is it File Vault, Drive Crypt, BitLocker, or TrueCrypt? So Microsoft Windows feature that allows for the entire encryption of a drive. The correct answer is a BitLocker. All right. So in summary, we've talked about users and groups, NTFS versus share permissions, shared files and folders, system files and folders, user authentication, BitLocker, BitLocker to go and EFS. S. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.